Hi there, Matt Wade here. And today we have a bit of a special video. In mid-September, I was lucky enough to be a virtual guest at Microsoft Ignite, where I chatted with one of the esteemed hosts, Rick Claus, about how to run a good online meeting in Microsoft Teams, jam-packed with tips, tricks, and other hacks, complete with demos, on making the most of Teams, I thought this video might be useful to you, your colleagues, peers, friends, students, pets, and anyone else who might listen. I hope you enjoy. Now, with quarantine still in full swing, the video conferencing has become paramount to productivity for everyone. Phrases like, can you hear me? I, I can't hear you. No, wait, 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 you're muted. <laughs> they are basically the call phrases for 2020. Here to tell us more about the opportunities Microsoft Teams can deliver to your organization, please welcome VP of Client Engagement for Atbot, a Microsoft MVP, Matt Wade. Matt, thank you very much for joining us, my friend. Hey, Rick, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate being here. Now, I, I got to say that I've, I've watched a number of your videos online and a number of your different recommendations and blog posts about how to do stuff with Microsoft Teams to be more like a rock star. I'm just looking for like the entry level stuff, like for your everyday user, the, the, the teachers that are out there, the parents that are dealing with homeschooling, like what are the basics that they should be doing just to get the most of making a good experience with Microsoft Teams? What would you recommend to them? Well, for one, I think we just have to admit that uh, online meetings aren't exactly a natural experience. And uh, I, I've been working through Teams now for the last three or four years working remotely. And it's something you do have to kind of try at, but uh, there's not a whole lot of, uh, let's say, just like kind of quick tip, get going kind of guides. So in the last year or so, I, I took some time to put a guide together. Mm -hmm. And I have to say thanks, especially to, uh, to Avpoint and uh, Sven Seidenberger. Uh, for doing a review of this for a rockstar meetings guide on how to use uh, how to do meetings right in Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to everybody, uh, it really comes down to join on time and be engaged. Turn your camera on if you can, uh, at least for the first few minutes. Uh, I think especially with everybody being remote right now, we're having a lot less human engagement and human engagement really does uh, set up uh, a lot of um, you know good interactions and ideas and just it's just we're social we're social beings, right? And that that's just a major thing. And with your camera on, try to have some good lighting. Put a little investment in that because you're going to be spending a lot of time on camera. Just spend 10 to, you know, I don't know, 10 to $12 online on one of these little Instagram uh, influencer lights that you can yeah. just hook up right to your clip to right to your, uh, your table or your desk and you're good to go. There's even ones you and I were chatting about, the ones that you can kind of clip right on your laptop and it's really super easy to use. Yep. And uh, I'm a big fan of the stay on mute unless, uh, you know, Unless you're in like a brainstorming session or you absolutely need to be discussing because nobody, uh, everybody except for you can hear whatever background noise is coming from your microphone. So those are some of the big ones for like everybody. Yeah. And I, I was funny because th those particular ring lights are very popular and uh, my daughters were literally falling over themselves laughing, thinking that, oh, look, their dad got a selfie cam light. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. Well, do this is for work. It's got to do my eyelashes, my makeup. You know, it's got to be all done right. Exactly. You know, you know, I actually have a recommendation for folks, and this is not necessarily from a team's perspective, but also definitely affects the quality of teams and any any conference type solution make sure if you can is have a wired connection i would not tell you the number of times that people that are using wi-fi to make meeting calls because it's absolutely more convenient to do so um, but a wired connection can definitely help out an awful lot as well totally agree yeah absolutely your internet connection is going to make or break the experience overall yeah and so lighting, uh, being able to take a, uh, more involvement on that one there. There was an interesting uh, comment from a friend of mine that actually was uh, just making a, a comment about asking for cameras to be on. I'm glad that you reinforced that one there. Now, mm -hmm. um, for the next level of intermediary type engagement, what would you say as far as the next leveling up? So I've, I've successfully mastered having a good conversation. I'm engaged. I've got the camera on. I'm, I don't have a window behind me, as an example, from a lighting perspective. Um, what would be the next incremental step for going to that next level? So I think the next level in Teams is being a uh, Teams meetings is going to be a presenter, somebody who's going to be uh, sharing information, going over slides, uh, talking about a file, doing any sort of editing or, uh, you know, just overall uh, sharing information to a group of attendees, whether it's a one to many or even if it's just a, a brainstorming or a breakout type of experience. There's a ton of new features coming out with Teams. Uh, that new uh, dynamic view and custom layouts is going to be probably one of the biggest oh, yeah, uh, yeah. new things that I'm excited about because you'll actually get to see you know, content next to people. But I think for the presentation side of things, probably one of the most uh, useful sessions or like, you know, uh, PD that I ever took when I was uh, you know, working for one of my earlier employers was a, a meeting facilitation course. And just 
tool independent, being mm -hmm. able to run a good meeting and knowing what those what the uh, the steps are, having a good agenda, making sure all the the uh, files are available ahead of time, making sure the right people are at the meeting, not wasting people's time, calling on people, getting them engaged, wrapping it up, giving out those tasks, all of that kind of stuff. So being able to take that and apply it within this new technology, I think, is a big step. Uh, and then knowing how you can take the technology of Teams and knowing what it can do, what it can't do, and how you can apply that. Uh, to what those good uh, facilitator skills are. Right. Now, I know that a number of my friends at Microsoft, even within Microsoft, we're all still learning teams because it's, it's you know, everyone's using it's ubiquitous, but everyone has different levels of it. One thing that I find that can be rather um, challenging is understanding that, yes, you can actually upload your PowerPoints to be able to go in and do a better level of presentation, as opposed to the default, which tends to be, oh, I'm just going to share my desktop and then use my PowerPoints locally and stuff like that. Um, do you have other suggestions along those lines for using some of those built-in tools before we get to the complex stuff. Sure, totally. So uh, using the built-in PowerPoint uh, feature is really cool. If you just go into share your screen within Teams, uh, you'll see your window or your windows if you have multiple monitors. That is a quick tip, I will say. Okay. If you work at home and you're in front of a screen all day long, invest in a second monitor. They're like $100. You can get a reasonable one for 100 bucks online these days. I realize it's not necessarily uh, super cheap, but like cut out going to Starbucks every day for two months and boom, you got <laughs> yourself a second monitor. It yeah. makes a world of difference. Um, but next to that is going to be the uh, option to share a PowerPoint slide deck. And what it does is it uploads it uh, into OneDrive or into uh, the sh a shared space for the meeting so that the other people in the meeting can actually access that slideshow. They can actually bounce around the slides, see them themselves, so they can go on their own speed uh, and they can uh, you know, really take part and be more engaged with the experience uh, sort of at a, you know, let's say, I'll say a basic presenter level step. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that one point that I actually just learned about recently, which was the ability to go through and you can allow the attendees to go forward in the slides or stay with the presenter and you can lock them in place. So I know whenever I meet with Joey, he always likes to go ahead and read the whole deck to be able to kind of jump ahead. Yeah, but so. personally, I, I hate that. I, you know, I have a climax <laughs> at the end. My, my slides are, are it's, a plot it's a, line. Yeah, it's Come a story. On, I see the ending ahead of time, you know. Yeah. Okay, so... How about the complex stuff? Because I know that you've got some very interesting things. Now, um, this does this is independent, I guess, of the different type of platform that you're running Teams on top of, whether it's a Mac yeah. or if it's a Windows type device. But show me some of the interesting things you can do to really up your level if you're going to be some like if you're going to be doing remote presentations as like the main part of your gig. What would you recommend yeah. in that space? Definitely. So I think sharing is actually one of the biggest things. It keeps people on the same page, both literally and figuratively, if you're working on slides or you're actually collaborating on things. I mean, the co-authoring in Word or Excel PowerPoint is awesome, but sometimes you just want to make sure everybody sees what you're actually making edits on, even if they're working on their own page mm -hmm. uh, at the same time or their own device at the same time. So uh, if you look at my screen right now, you actually see uh, uh, the camera th that's built into my computer. So I happen to use a Mac. Fun fact, Office is actually best experience on Mac OS. I'll probably get in trouble. <laughs> but what? Um, I have PowerPoint open and I have uh, QuickTime open. And this is showing me my live feed from my webcam. Now, if you're running Windows, you can use Windows 10 camera that's built in. Okay. Uh, and if you want a little bit less Chrome or buttons showing up, you can always download VLC player, which is a free open source video player that's been around for like 20 years, totally yeah. added very good. Yeah, yeah. And you can actually show your uh, video alongside other applications. So in this case, I have PowerPoint open. And of course, if I go and go forward and I try to open up PowerPoint, it takes over my whole screen, right? right. I don't actually want that. But I could go forward and like maybe keep my window for my QuickTime and make sure that it is always on top. Okay. So if I show my PowerPoint, I can keep my video right yeah. here and I can actually manage my slideshows and you can still see me as I present to you some of the topics that I want to talk about okay. and go through some of my slides, things like that. You're absolutely Another blowing my mind right now. The fact that you're yeah, able right? to do this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Another quick tip, and let me just turn off in QuickTime Player the float on top because I don't want that right now. In uh, PowerPoint, this is, uh, again, Mac or uh, Windows doesn't matter. If you go into the Slideshow tab mm -hmm. and you click Set Up Slideshow, there's an option here where if you click under Show Type and you click Browse by an Individual, when you launch the slides, they're basically in their own window. Oh. And you can use the oh. Snap uh, tool on Windows to drag to the left and basically you know, uh, lock it on the left. And you can then choose the... Uh, uh, the camera on the right, and on Mac we have something very similar. I can now choose this, and boom, I can now 
change this and I can be bouncing between my slides and you can see me as I present to you and show you the content live configurable. And with that great new dynamic view and custom layouts, it's awesome. That's, that's what's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the downsides to that is it's not as configurable as this. And I believe most of it is going to be attendee driven. So the, the attendee has to make the call to choose to see the custom or the, uh, the custom layout or the dynamic view. So I, as a presenter, if I want to make sure somebody sees it the way I want them to see it, this is a really great way for me to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think this is pretty cool. And, you know, and also this will still work with that new functionality as well. It's just, as you mentioned, it's just a matter of fact totally. that you're sharing your desktop to be able to do that. Yep. That yep. looked amazing. Now, now you said that you're running that on a second monitor, right? That's correct. Now, so the main reason behind that is so that you can have complete control over what the, the, the palette looks like. Like, cause exactly. I, I saw your background that was there, right? So I'm exactly. assuming you've yep. got your icons hidden and stuff like that too. Yeah, so I only have icons on one screen, and um, this this happens to be, uh, you know, I can I can make this into like a newscaster style, so it's oh, mainly nice. me, and then a little bit, you know, right here. Yeah. Uh, I keep the second screen as basically my sharing screen, and the first screen, my primary screen, that's where my dock is, or where like the Windows taskbar would be, yeah. so that that stuff doesn't get in the way. And all my icons, they're all on that screen, and that's like my safe zone, so I don't keep anything there, or I don't keep anything on the sharing screen that I wouldn't want you to see. Okay. Yeah. That is really really cool. Um, One more cool thing I thought I'd show real quick is if I slide over and take advantage of a feature that both Windows and Mac OS has, uh, and actually this background real quick, I actually spent some time living in the Caribbean. This is a view from one of my favorite spots oh, when I nice. lived there, yeah, yeah. Um, is using uh, virtual desktops. Okay. So using that snapping feature, you can totally be bringing in two different apps at the same time and basically taking over the screen and sharing that screen. So right here you see uh, OneNote on the right side and you see uh, a whiteboard on the left. And mm -hmm. the whiteboard could be, uh, you know, could be from the meeting whiteboard in the meeting, or it could be a personal whiteboard that you happen to open up yourself and you, that you just, you know, is yours for yours to be you know, able to be presented by you. And that's useful because sometimes the whiteboard uh, in the meeting becomes a bit of a free for all because everybody can edit it. But let's say I'm a teacher and I want to actually start, you know, sending some information here to uh, or typing out some information here on a, uh, a tablet. So let's mm -hmm. say I pull out my iPad or it could be uh, any other tablet with a, a stylus or if you want to use your finger, you can totally do that. Mm -hmm. uh, whiteboard isn't available for Android, but you can use it in the browser. So right. there's definitely a workaround in that respect. So if I bring up, you know, my whiteboard, I'm going to write on this live. I have the same whiteboard open on my iPad. So I can be saying something like uh, figuring out the first steps within my, my uh, physics equation here to say, you know, V zero X is equal to 4.5 cosine theta and V zero Y. You've already lost me with the math. I, I know, right? <laughs> and I think that's enough math, you know, for today, right? <laughs> so I think that's a pretty, pretty cool way to, you know, show off how you can be writing and inking at the same time on a whiteboard, showing off some of the same stuff, you know, that you want to be doing, you know, all at the same time. And, you know, cool tips that, you know, they're not like groundbreaking or, or breathtaking or anything like that. But like, once you think about it, you go, man, I, I, I'm going to use that starting tomorrow kind of mm -hmm. thing. So the, all that functionality is available right now on Microsoft Teams. I love the 100%. idea of keeping your, your safe space as your secondary monitor to be able to go off and work from. And obviously trying this kind of stuff out. But one of the challenges that I have is I need to find someone to have a meeting with to be able to play with some of this kind of stuff to see what it looks like, right? Um, that's so, true. so that's, that can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes to be able to find someone that wants to answer, uh, those calls in the middle of the night to do some practices with things. Um, Hey, when you're doing, you know, your, uh, your Friday night happy hours, virtual happy hour, do yeah. it in teams and, and try some of the stuff out and just say, you know, when you go and grab your beverage of choice, I want to try this thing out and, and, and do that instead, you know? Nice. Can you give me a quick little summary of what you would say would be the top three things people should focus on both for the end user that's the regular and then also for the pro for being able to go off and to try? Uh, I would say be engaged uh, is the first one. Be there, be present. Uh, if you're not pr being present in a meeting, there's not really a reason for you to be there. Um, know the tool, play around with it, see what it can do. Uh, if you haven't played with this before and you're not, sh uh, and you're curious about ever testing out your devices, so your webcam or your microphone, uh, just go into Teams into the search bar and type in slash, uh, you know, next to the period, 
uh, test call, and it'll actually test out your devices for you. So knowing that the uh, device and knowing the uh, the tool, I think, is really important. And then dive in a little bit and kind of play around with what the, the tool can do for you. There's a lot there for you if you have a little bit of creativity. Uh, everything that I just showed you is really not a Teams thing, right? It was more about ingenuity and creativity and how can I manage my content on my screen, right? And just think think about that and how you can play with that. Right. Now, folks want to go off and get a hold of you and find out some of these great blog posts and that sort of stuff. Uh, is there a home base we can refer people to for more information? Yeah. Definitely. So um, uh, my uh, blog online is under jump2365, J-U-M-P-T-O, 365.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also put up a lot of YouTube videos to give a lot of demos. Everything that I talked about today actually has its own specific video that goes over exactly how to do that. Uh, and actually, uh, coming out soon, I'm going to be putting out a... Uh, uh, a new book on uh, it's basically uh, a uh, user guide. I want it to be like that go-to resource that you just pick up and how do I do this one thing? And it's going to be step-by-step, -step, screenshots, the whole nine yards, uh, Teach Yourself Visually Microsoft Teams. So it's available for pre-order on Amazon. And uh, I also have the resources, uh, links, and uh, everything on what we talked about today available on a blog post uh, that should be uh, uh, available directly from uh, this um, uh, viewing platform. Absolutely fantastic. And thank you very much. That is at that Matt Wade. Thanks so much for talking with me, Matt. Very much appreciated. Now, if you've got a moment and you're interested in learning that much more about Microsoft Teams and Office 365, I've got a new book coming out. You can pre-order Teach Yourself Visually Microsoft Teams today. Just visit the link below to be one of the first to get your copy. Thanks so much for watching. For more Microsoft Ignite news, Check out my recent video on all of the announcements from the 2020 event and feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below. As always, a like and a subscribe is much appreciated. Happy meeting in Microsoft Teams.